Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy, and today I put together a little wish list of features that I would like to see included on the next generation of Flash Forge Adventure 5M 3D printers. Now this was prompted by Flash Forge releasing a roadmap for 2024, and on that roadmap includes two different versions, two newer versions of the Adventure 5M series, including the regular 5M and the 5M Pro. I'm gonna put up a picture so you can see what that roadmap looks like. And next to the name of the printers, they put the letters NG, which now they have confirmed over on Facebook that NG does stand for next generation. Now we don't know anything about what this next generation is going to entail. If it's more of a reiteration, an upgrade, an update, or a whole new thing, we don't really know right now. But just for fun, I put together a little list of things that I would like to see included on the newer version of the Adventure 5M. Not the Pro, just the regular 5M version. So number one, just gotta get this out of the way, the multicolor, multi-material filament system. That's what everybody is doing right now. Bamboo Lab has been able to take that ball and run with it for far too long without having a real competitor in this space. And now everyone is just sort of getting their act together and coming out with their own versions of it. So Anycubic's got their Ace Pro, which you can purchase separately if you didn't wanna get the printer. You can buy it separately for like $280. $89 right now. We know that Creality is working on theirs. We know that Frozen is working on theirs. And now it's time for Flash Force to get in on the action. I haven't made any, any indication that they're doing anything like this besides a little query that they put out on Facebook several weeks ago to ask how would people feel about an upgrade that will allow you to print a couple colors at once and it was like a $20 upgrade or something like that. I don't know if that was them just testing the waters or if that was a little bit of a teaser or whatever the case may be, but that is definitely something that they should do going forward because that's where the competition is going right now. And if they do this, I hope that they take inspiration from any cubic and make it into a filament dryer as well. So you can have the best of both worlds. You got your multicolors and you can keep your filament nice and dry in the process while you're printing with it. And anything that they can do to make that whole setup look nice and neat and not just have, you know, like a bunch of tubes going into the extruder and, you know, spreading out all over the place, that would be great. So that's just kind of a gimme. That is something that a lot of people are looking for. When I ask what are the things that you're hoping that this printer will come with, most people say multicolor, multicolor, multicolor. So that's what Flash Forge needs to do. And hopefully they can come up with some sort of algorithm to uh, minimize the amount of waste that multi-material, multi-color system tends to produce with all the pooping that is necessary when it comes to swapping the colors. So hopefully that they can uh, iron that out. And then people will feel a lot better about uh, using this type of system without worrying about too much waste. And Flash Forge also sells a wide variety of filament, so it's also their chance to get in on that action by adding that RFID technology to their spools. The next thing I think will be pretty nice to have is the option to switch back and forth between Flash Forge's version of Clipper with their improvements and UI and different features and just using the regular stock Clipper. Now, you can technically do this already thanks to a community mod. You can switch back and forth between the operating systems, but it's not something that's a officially supported. It's just something that the community is doing and improving on themselves. But it would be great if Flash Forge just got in on the action to encourage this type of open sourcing of that software and even maybe even lending a hand and providing instructions to give us on how we can switch over to regular Clipper if we want and then go back whenever we want as well. If that was somehow baked into the printer where maybe within a click of a couple buttons you can just immediately switch between the different OS's, that would be amazing. But they really have to start embracing that open source uh, nature and that open source expectations that, that the community has. They don't have the cleanest track record of being the most open and giving when it comes to that kind of thing. So I think a little change in behavior like that will go a long way with the community. 
The next thing I think is aesthetic, but it can also be really useful, and that is LEDs. Install some LEDs on the frame so that we'll be able to see our prints even when it's dark in the room. We can do some remote monitoring and we'll be able to see everything nice and clear. And I just also like the look of seeing that nice daylight balance light shining down on the print as the printer is doing its thing. I think that's really, really awesome. Now the 5M Pro has that already, but I don't think that it'll be too much of a problem to just include the LEDs on the regular 5M as well. People have done it already. It doesn't seem to be a terribly difficult mod to do, but just having that be stock inside of the, of the operating system and as part of the printer itself, I mean, hey, why not? It can't cost that much to do it, right? So let's see that done in the next generation. The next thing I wanna see is a nozzle cleaning brush on the back of the build plate. This is one of those quality of life features that is so useful. And I think every printer should have this. So if you're not familiar with this, it's basically, it's just a little brush that is stuck on the build plate on the back and it, it cleans your nozzle when you're switching filaments or if you paused your printing, you know how the filament can sometimes ooze a little bit like that. If you can just have that in the back of the build plate and embed it in the G code so that the print head will go back and just real quick to get that extra filament off, that'll be great because it can help stop imperfections that might form on prints due to that blob of filament being there. Um, there's been a lot of situations, especially if I'm switching filament, where I'm ready to go, but in between the time it takes for that nozzle to heat up and that print head to move back into position, get a little bit of that filament oozing out, and then I try to just grab it real quick without burning myself or without smearing it. Hopefully I don't smear it. And it'll be great if you just had a tool to clean that up quickly. Here's something I also think would be pretty cool. An enclosure, but not just any enclosure, a magnetic enclosure. Now, the frame of the Aventura 5M is magnetic. That's how I attach my camera to it. It's pretty strong magnets and it just slaps on there really good. But what if we could buy an enclosure that is pre-made but the whole thing is magnetic. So instead of having to worry about, you know, like a bunch of screws and stuff and screwing everything in and even printing our own parts and using a bunch of filament and costing a fair amount of money in order to do that, what if we just had magnetic enclosure where each piece would just slap right onto the frame? And maybe when it comes to like the top or the bottom where pieces have to go together, maybe we can use some screws to fix those together, but the core of it is just simply magnetic. So everything would just snap right into place. Um, I think that would be a great alternative to printing your own enclosure and having to deal with any potential failures or, or dialing in the particular filament that you might want to use like PTG or something like that. Um, just making things easier for people who might want to have an enclosure so that they can print with the materials that are recommended with enclosures like uh, ABS or ASA, something like that. We still have the regular pieces. We want to have like a drag chain or something like that. You really want to just cover everything so it can be your own. That's still the option, but a magnetic enclosure that you can just snap on in a handful of minutes and go about your business and still be able to print with those materials. I think that would be a great option to have. That is something that I would definitely purchase. These last few things are really more about the printing process. And the first one has to do with how loud the 5 is. It is a loud printer, so I think some more efficient cooling is in order so that it won't be so freaking loud. <laughs> and it's one of the things where people, you know, ask me about this printer and like what's one of the downsides about it. I say it is loud, so don't put it in a place where you're going to need to hear anything else, the television or people talking to you, because it's definitely going to be distracting. So being able to make sure that this printer is not as loud, even when it's not using an enclosure, would be great quality of light improvement to it. The next thing is getting that hot end temperature up to 300 degrees Celsius because right now it tops off at 280. Now for a print farm like scenario, I think being able to get up to 300 degrees Celsius will be a really nice selling point, especially if the price is low, because at that temperature, you have more flexibility printing something like polycarbonate, which is really, really strong. So if you have a print farm going and you're printing parts that are supposed to be strong and resistant and very durable, then polycarbonate may be the filament that you want to go with. And being able to do that on a machine like this as reliable as it has been for a lot of people and at the price that it sits at 300 bucks 
then I think that will be a really attractive price for someone who wants to have a fleet of these to crank out those high temperature materials. And last but not least, keep the price affordable. The fact that the 5M is $299 in most situations, it's like on sale all the time. It's pretty much like the regular price at this point. It's one of the most attractive things about this printer. I still think that it is one of, if not the best deals going right now, especially from a company that's got some name recognition like Flash. Forge. So whatever this next generation is going to be, I hope that they keep the price in that ballpark. And even if you have to push it a little bit, don't push it too far because you're going to want people to still see this as being one of the biggest bangs for their buck that they can get in the 3D printing community. And as the competition heats up, seeing that the Flash Forge Adventure 5M next generation is still coming in at below the price of every other printer just about that you can find that gives you similar features is going to be something that really helped it to stand out just like the regular 5M does now. So that's it for now. Let me know down in the comments what features you would like to see present on the next generation of Flash Forge Adventure 5M 3D printers, whether it's the regular 5M or the 5M Pro. I'm gonna keep my eyes and ears open for any other news regarding these newer printers, but like I said, it's coming out in August, which isn't too far away, but maybe Flash Forge will drop some breadcrumbs along the way. So if they do, I'll be sure to let you know about it. And until then, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.